It's magnificent, Madeline. Don't you think so? Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. I consider myself kind of a renaissance man, so I am well aware that while astrologists and star whistles should be failed, their magic is not always possible to reproduce in modern laboratories. Thankfully, we didn't have to deal with those in medieval Europe, and this is where our game takes place. The story is that the famous astrologist Nostradamus is old and tired, so when the French queen comes to visit, he decides to send his daughter instead. As astrology is a sexist industry, she is then forced to dress up as her brother to be taken seriously. The queen's problem is that all her servants are turning up dead and it all seems to follow a prophecy written by Nostradamus, which ends in the death of royalty, the only deaths that truly matters. You will of course be investigating this, and you will be running around your house, your town, and the local castle. talking with people, making jam, and doing people's horoscopes. The environments are great, and they just oozes with charm. There aren't that many of them, but the ones that exist are just peak comfy. There are also a lot of charming activities, like baking bread, smithing, and making potions and it is just nice and relaxing. It hurts the pacing of the story of course, but I still like the inclusion. You may enter. Now the story is okay. Nostradamus is fairly cool and the main character is alright. And it is nice that people will act differently depending on if you are dressed as your brother or yourself. The rest of it though is just okay, and while it's not bad, it is not great either, and unless you are a fan of the themes involved, I don't think you will get that much out of it. Now when it comes to the puzzles, we can divide them into astrology puzzles, sensible puzzles, and nonsensical puzzles. If we start with the astrology ones, then the name kind of gives it away, and the game assumes that you have some knowledge of star magic yourself. How do you determine someone's sign? <sighs> ja, hur fan ska jag veta det? As a humble Swedish working bee, I am completely ignorant of the arcane arts, and I had to look up guides. But it is what it is. And then we have the sensible puzzles. The game have many of these, and they are nice. Sadly though, they are dragged down by a crappy interface. The biggest issue is that there is no way to highlight objects that you can interact with. I hate getting stuck by not realizing that I could use something in the environment. And this happens all the time, and sadly it is made worse by fairly bad feedback from the main character. Some small comments would probably have made it a lot better. The fun doesn't stop there though, and the way the game handles the inventory and the journal is rather messy as well and I often got stuck by not realizing that I could do something that the game wanted me to do. The interface is just a mess. And then finally we have the last category of puzzles, 
the nonsensical ones, and these certainly exist. But to be fair, there aren't that many of them, but they are made much worse by the previously mentioned issues with the interface. I should mention that I am not only a fool, but I am also lacking in pride and dignity and I simply tab out when I get stuck. With my playstyle, some of these issues are not that big of a deal, but this is not a game that I would recommend or play without the walkthrough. But that is my little brain talking. All in all, I kind of liked Nostradamus. It is not perfect, but it was charming and it didn't overstay its welcome. If this sounds like a game that you would like, then give it a go. It shouldn't cost you that much.